Hello, all. this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 63. Today we'll talk about the coming storm, mass mandates and fit, and uh, Nebraska's vaccine rollout. Uh, so the good news is, you know, we have a downward trend across the United States, and the Nebraska reflects that trend, of course. But uh, keep in mind, though, there's still a lot of orange and red and very little yellow and no green. Uh, and so we still are not out of the woods. Um, a good CNN article uh, basically saying, don't get cocky with these numbers. We still need to be, have res be uh, having our restrictions in place, and we do not need to be easing up too fast because that could make it all come back again. Um, uh, if you could listen to one thing this week, I would recommend you listen to uh, Michael Osterholm's update today uh, on uh, a realist adjust the sales, where he basically gives you the honest, straight answers that unfortunately people don't want to hear. Uh, there will be another surge in the next couple months uh, when these uh, new variants hit. Uh, also, he's a fan of the one shot strategy, which I also agree, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit as well. Um, so he actually uses Ireland as a cautionary tale, which I've used before, and that, uh, you know, they had a surge uh, right in the, the spring last year that people got in their pandemic fatigue. Uh, they had a surge, got it under control, and then the holidays, people relaxed their guard and the variant hit, and they went from uh, very low rates to very high within three weeks. Uh, essentially, if you drill down on that, this is the holidays in Ireland, and when people started to get together, boom, it went up, and it went from a low of t below 10 to over 130, which is worse than it got here. <clears throat> just within a few weeks. Uh, and this is hard for people to get because we think linear. We think things go like this, but that's not how pandemics work. They percolate one, two, four, eight, and then exponential growth kicks in and man, things go fast. So the fire lights, it smolders, and then it, go, then it bursts into flames. Um, and when this is happens, the problem that people still need to get into their, uh, their minds is every new infection is another roll of dice for a potentially even worse variant or a worse strain uh, or a more deadly strain, unfortunately. And so we need to keep focusing on reducing spread. Uh, a way to look at it in comparison, Lancaster County, uh, we are actually down uh, as of this morning to 16.4 per 100,000. We're not as low as Ireland was, though, when it kicked off like this. And so uh, within three to four weeks, we could be right back here, even worse than we were back in November. And so this is where we are. And we do not have enough people vaccinated to prevent all those deaths yet. Uh, we need to get everybody over 65 with at least one shot before we start opening it up and risking something like this again. Uh, that is not what hap is happening, though, unfortunately. Um, every health apartment district in Nebraska is higher than where Ireland was when it started. Uh, and so we are not out of the woods and this is not green and it is not okay to open up. Uh, they go into the article and they talk about, unfortunately, North Dakota and Iowa reversing their mask mandates, which is just flat wrong. Uh, the folks at UNMC uh, put out this statement last uh, week, basically says the evidence is solid and that mass ordinance was work. And so please keep those in place. Uh, the good news, uh, Omaha uh, re-approved uh, uh, its uh, uh, that mandate unanimously seven to zero. Uh, so although only Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department is allowed to create a mask ordinance, uh, a lot of cities in Nebraska figured out that they can go around state and, and do it themselves. And so uh, this helps. And the proof of this at the end of the day, like I keep telling people, is the end of the day, whoever has the least dead people is the guy who's right. Uh, and so here we are in Nebraska, Lincoln Lancaster County, which put it in its mask ordinance first, and it's, it's countywide, has the lowest number of dead people. Uh, if we had done a partial mask ordinance, like uh, the Omaha metro area, where some municipalities have them and some don't, we would have over 100 more dead people in Lincoln than we have right now. And if we were as loose as the rest of the state, we'd have over, over 200 more dead people right now. And so the mask ordinance mandates is work, uh, so we need to keep those in place. And we're not going to get rid of them until at least this summer. So uh, quit asking, no, we're going to have masks in school till at least the summer, maybe even the fall if we don't aren't vaccinating kids in the fall. Um, the other thing they talk about, you know, we can do some opening up, and I actually think uh, New York is doing it right. A 25% capacity, that is actually based on some math and some science. Uh, what bugs me is that a lot of the governmental things coming out are basically uh, shots at a, a, you know, darts at a dartboard, not based on the science of spread. You know, and this is out there. We know how fast things spread. It's a combination of time, masking, uh, ventilation, and capacity. And so unless you're dealing with all of these, you are risking more spread again. Um, so uh, when I walk into a coffee shop, if, uh, if the only people without masks look like this, this is me taking a sip out of my coffee cup, cup that's an okay coffee shop to be in, assuming the capacity is low. Uh, it's okay like this because when you take a drink, you hold your breath, otherwise you'll choke, and then you put your mask back on again. But if I walk into a coffee shop and half the people have no masks on, I walk right back out after getting my coffee. Um, Michael Ostrom last, last week uh, talked about this, but uh, there was a CDC uh, recommendation, of course, to consider either double masking or better fit. It's not both. Uh, either can be the, 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 the case. And the way to think of it is a combination of filtration, fit, and time, which uh, Michael Oscarholm talked about last week in his update, and also what I would say risk. And so the, the issue is 
Uh, filtration helps, and the more filtration the better. That's where the double masking helps. However, the double masking doesn't help if you don't have better fit, because if there's more resistance on the front end, it might cr increase leak on the side end. So it's not just filtration, but fit. Uh, also consider time. So let's say, for example, I'm just walking into the into the in the quick shop after getting a tank of gas or something like that to pay, and I'm in and out really quick. The time is so short, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. I, your cloth, homemade cloth mask might be fine just there. However, if you're going to be in uh, some place for hours on end, well, then maybe you should step up to an N95, uh, figure out how to make your mask fit better, and there's some tricks uh, with a surgical mask, for example, to pull it tighter, plus it's got that metal clip on the nose, uh, or you may consider double masking, assuming fit is correct. And I'll also consider the, your wrist and those around you. So if you're going to visit your grandma for an hour, you really want the N95 or double masking, whereas if it's just going into the quick shop, uh, that's not as, or the grocery store, I wouldn't worry so much about it. So keep, keep those things in mind. It's a combination of filtration, the fit of the mask, the time you're someplace, and the risk of you and the people around you. Those should kind of dictate how you operate. Um, uh, Michael Ostrom, like I said in last week's update, also goes over this a little bit. And, and again, uh, he's right now becoming my go-to source and that I look uh, to most often. So listen to his weekly op op podcast. Uh, even in replace of me, he's probably better, although I'll give you some more local Nebraska stuff. Uh, so again, it's a combination of time. And so one of the reasons this reduction worked here, people are masking. It's Two, it's two hours instead of four hours, and there's better ventilation. You need to kind of address all three. Uh, also, the same goes for schools and uh, daycares. So the article also talk, goes on to talk about, yes, daycares are safe and schools can be safe, but again, only if precautions are in place. So they say, for example, staff members all wore masks. There was some staffing or capacity reduction, for example. You have to address all of these things, not just one. So just because somebody says you're green doesn't mean everybody comes back to school 100% and everything else is out the door. Uh, Rachel Rulins, she got in a little trouble, although I think it was mostly misinterpretation of her comments. Uh, they are going to be releasing some school guidance, finally, that is actually, I think, evidence-based, hopefully, uh, any time this week now. Uh, she did not say that teachers don't need to be vaccinated. She said that you don't have to delay school opening for vaccination. Uh, if the right precautions are in place, just like they've been in Lincoln Public Schools uh, and many schools in Nebraska f since the start, you can have a safe school. However, obviously, you do want to get teachers vaccinated as soon as possible, because that just every little thing helps to increase safety and we may need to talk about double masking in school because of the duration and time people are in especially once these variants make it into Nebraska. Um, uh, the other thing, and Michael Ostrom talked about this, is the best vaccine strategy is simple, focus on Americans 65 and older. And I know teachers and, and other folks are not going to like to hear that, but if we get, we need to save as, we're in sort of crisis mode when people don't seem to realize that, we need to save as many lives as possible. And the way to do that is get vaccinate as many people versus 65 and maybe even 55 as, as possible uh, because the risk of death is so highly correlated with age. And so, yes, there is some risk down here, but it's so much lower than this that if you want to save a lot of people, this is where you go. Uh, and looking at Nebraska's numbers to date, 83% of our day deaths are over 65 and 94% of our deaths are over 55. So we need to get at least one shot in every arm over the ages of 65 and ideally 55 before the next wave hits. And so this should be our biggest strategy right now. Get that one shot as soon as possible uh, to try to prepare for the next surge. Uh, Nebraska, unfortunately, is still not doing very well with its rollout. As of this morning, uh, it says that we have 350,000 uh, allocated to us, uh, but only 246,000 doses have administered. That means we have 104,000 waiting. And our backlog from our average time from allocation to in an arm is, is over two weeks, and that's unacceptable. Uh, that's why Nebraska is falling behind everybody else. Nebraska is now one of the worst states in the country in terms of vaccine rollout. If you go on this list of all the, the states and territories, we're at the very, very bottom, 50th out of 59. We need to speed our rollup out. And yes, some mass vaccination sites like the Pinnacle Bank Arena are good. However, in the meantime, we could also still be using uh, our primary care clinics, especially our safety net clinics, to get that vaccine out faster to as many people as possible, at least one shot in every arm. Uh, and then again, one of the reasons you want to involve the local health care providers is, again, hesitancy is going to be an issue. If we're ever going to get to herd humanity, we need to be getting 80% plus. And to do that, we need to increase trust. And the people, again, study after study, and I've I cited this uh, Mayo Clinic proceedings, which you can look at uh, in the notes section. Uh, the quality and strength of health care provider recommendation has been shown to influence vaccination rates. And then a recent study responded into a greater likelihood. So the most trusted person is their local health care provider. So we need to involve them in the vaccination process. Uh, at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. 
Uh, again, uh, risk comparison on that vaccine to try to decrease hesitancy. I think showing people risk in a visual format is a better way to communicate risk. Uh, so this, as of today, this is US, your chances of dying in coronavirus in this last 12 months is this versus your chance of dying in a car wreck versus just having a severe reaction. This isn't a death because there have not been any deaths linked directly to the vaccine at this point. There are some associations, meaning if you're going to vaccinate 10 million people, people are down to die the next week of a heart attack or stroke, especially when you're vaccinating old people. That doesn't mean it was the vaccine that caused that. It was going to, for those, some of those folks, likely to happen anyway. They've not been able to show any connection uh, as far as a fatality to Pfizer or Moderna. This is just a severe reaction that is treatable, uh, typically with epinephrine or something like that. That's why when you get a vaccine, it's done in a healthcare facility with healthcare professionals around you. Uh, but the risk is so low that it's just no comparison. Uh, so getting the, vac the, getting the vaccine is so much lower than anything. Even, you know, if you're worried about the vaccine, you should be worried more about dying in a car wreck next week, not the vaccine. Um, last thing we'll finish with is the uh, thoughts about mandating COVID-19 vaccines. And so I've talked about this in the past and Larry Gostin uh, from uh, uh, Georgetown wrote an article uh, with some co-authors uh, about the issue of mandating. And basically there's two issues to consider. One, can the government mandate a vaccine? And the answer is yes. Uh, they've been doing that for a long time. If you send your kid to school, your kid has to get a vaccine, a uh, number of vaccines. There are some exceptions, of course, and there probably would be exceptions if there were a mandate. Uh, but this has been established by Supreme Court and law for more than a century. The government could require to get a vaccine. However, I don't think they will. I think we will be able to get uh, to the point of herd immunity of 80 to 85% without mandates from the government. Uh, now, another question, though, is should, can your employer mandate you? And the answer is yes, your employer can mandate you. And this has also been done uh, for a long time, uh, things like hepatitis B or influenza vaccinations in a healthcare setting. Uh, but if you're serving a population and if your employees are serving somebody else and they're not vaccinating, they're putting not only their, their coworkers, but the paid people you're serving at risk. And so this is a risk to a company and a company can make that decision that they would require you to get a vaccine. Uh, I don't, I think this will probably happen at some point, but not right now. Uh, and again, just because you can mandate something doesn't mean you should vaccinate, mandate something. So I think at some point in the future, probably by this fall sometime, there will be some max, uh, some uh, vaccine mandates. Uh, I think a better way would be education. I think there is a way, I think we can get 80% of the, uh, the United States population if the vaccine is readily available by, from people they trust. I think we can get to 80%. So I think we'll be able to do it without a mandate. The other thing is, is adding some incentives. And I don't think a financial incentive is good, but you may have more freedom to do stuff if you are vaccinated. So for example, travel. Uh, already, this is not new either. Uh, so for example, for years and going to South, some countries in South America, you had to have a yellow fever vaccine, otherwise you couldn't go there. I think the same thing will happen with coronavirus vaccines at some point, where maybe some, uh, I'm certain some countries will, but maybe some other locations like Hawaii, for example, they may say that you can come here, but only if you have a, uh, a coronavirus vaccine. Uh, it could also become tied into whether you need to wear a mask or not wear a mask, depending on what the evidence shows. So I think at some point we will have some masking requirements, probably may or may not be from the government, but they may be either A, required by your employer, or B, required for certain activities. So uh, until then, I hope we can keep Nebraska with dust below 3,000. We've got a chance at it if we get some things right. Uh, to do that, we need the basic things like wear a mask, avoid crowded confined spaces, and get a vaccine when your number is called. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, again, uh, disclaimer that these are my opinions, but these are the organ not the, or the organizations I work for, but this is where I am. So you can ma make sure you know I'm not uh, one of these crazy uh, YouTube conspiracy people. So 